G'day guys. Hey, uh, welcome to Wayne Vickers, Seascape Artist at the moment. Look at this. Um, but I was down plein air painting, so painting on location, and I painted this little one here. And I made a time lapse of it, so I'm going to go ahead and play that for you now. And there's a little bit of colour mixing, a simple way to mix this blue sky, and then go ahead and mix that sand colour right there. Um, it's real easy. And I'll show you how to do that so you can go and stand on your local beach or wherever and paint one of these little seascapes and you'll just be having the time of your life. <laughs> Thanks guys. We'll go, ahead, go and watch it now. Rightio guys, so here we go. Um, the colours are titanium white mixing phthalo blue there and then adding a little bit of um, ultramarine blue. So that makes the blue for that baby blue sky on a nice day. Titanium white, phthalo blue, and ultramarine blue. And you're gonna see me, this is how I do it when I'm on location, go up and take that blue and that's in my line of sight with the sky. And I'm actually comparing the color I'm mixing to the actual sky color by just painting a little bit on the side of my canvas there, on my board. Okay, so that's my sky color. Now you take that blue that I've just mixed up and then you add some cadmium orange. And this was the trick, the easy little trick to mixing up these colors. So you've got your sky color, add a little bit of cadmium orange and see me down there? That's how I can explain what I'm doing. See, I'm comparing that color to the sand behind it. And I think you notice, pretty close. So that was the top tip. That was the easy little trick. Mix a sky blue color, add some cadmium orange and you're going to get a grey, like sand colour, a good colour for riverbed rocks, um, that's in relation to the sky you're painting at the time. Which changes depending on what day you're painting on. Okay, let's carry on here because now we are blocking in the sky. So if you've watched my videos before, um, you would have noticed that I've just made that gradient on my palette. And now I'm simply transferring that gradient of blue to my panel. And so transfer that on, give it a quick whip around with that badger brush just to um, give it a wee little blend, but not too much, because now we're coming by and we're putting some white on to make the clouds. So same as always, I'm using a hog bristle fan brush to put some paint on that don't, I'm not really trying to represent the clouds as such, I'm not painting clouds, I'm just putting some paint on that I'll then come by with this badger head brush and blending upwards. Always like round and round, oh no, it's sped up so it's hard to see, but it's like a round and round, round and round, but always trying to blend up, blend up, blend up with that badger brush to retain the top edge of that cloud. Now coming by with some darker, some darker cloud color. Uh, my palette's really simple, so that darker cloud color is just ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and some titanium white, but leaning towards ultramarine blue. And I just repeat this process of putting paint on with the fan brush and then blending it up with the badger brush until I get the clouds that I'm sort of, I'm looking for. Here we go again. Bearing in mind you have to have a clean badger brush. So I've got um, solvent or something there that I give the brush a bit of a wash in between blends and then come back with a nice clean brush and go again and now you can see those clouds are starting to, starting to take shape that's a, you can see the sky there that's the sort of sky i had now i'll go ahead and rip off that masking tape but i'll carry on with those clouds a little bit just working them through don't exactly know what sort of clouds they are guys i'm not really a meteor meteorologist just a uh, just a painter but i think maybe some cirrus clouds there it was actually clouding in um, I spent about an hour to paint this painting and from when I started see these clouds coming across over top That's actually me there on the beach doing it. You can see it's winter. It's a little bit cold It looks really nice, but it is a bit cold here in NZ in June Right Now not one to make waste paint. So that color there is the sky color the leftover sky blue and I've added some ultramarine blue to it to 
make the blue of that distant landforms, the headland there. Now, if you see on that, on the bottom right, just above the masking tape, you'd, you would have noticed that I'd put a little bit of blue on there. And that was me once again, just comparing the blue that I was mixing, um, lining it up with the actual landform itself and just checking the color mixing, seeing if I was getting pretty close. Right now where I'm, I'm watching it on TV with you, it looks like it's not really the same color, but trust me, when I mixed it at the time, it was pretty close. So, so essentially ultramarine blue, burnt umber, um, a little bit of white makes this um, blue color like that. Bearing in mind, I grabbed, I took some of that sky blue in there, so there could be a trace of phthalo blue in there as well, but I'm trying not to confuse you. So the masking tape, this is my sneaky little trick, um, just to speed things up when I'm on location or anywhere actually, it leaves a little lip, a lip of paint, you can imagine. And when I'm doing things like horizons, I can just um, run up to that lip and it makes it a little bit easier. <laughs> a little bit easier for me to make a straight line, especially when I'm out standing on the middle of the beach somewhere. So I just nearly go up to that paint, up to that line, and then I take it all the way like I'm doing there. And these are just with soft um, synthetic flat brushes. Just um, yeah, nothing flash about that brush, just a synthetic flat brush. Now that sea color goes in. It's quite gray, the ski, the sea. See it there? A bluey gray color. I'll just be repeating myself. Burnt umber, uh, titanium white, ultramarine blue, leaning, leaning very blue. Now, to be 100% honest, painting the sea wet on wet, painting water wet on wet like this, while standing on the beach, is a little bit tricky. It is far easier, well I think so, I think myself it's far easier to paint water realistically if you paint it in layer, uh, layer upon layer, which is an indirect process. So you would paint it, let it dry, then come back and paint some more. Um, and you could repeat that process over and over again. And that's far easier than painting this wet on wet, all in one go. Um, whether you're standing on the beach or you're standing in the studio, to be honest, it's just um, easier to paint it layer upon layer. Okay, now we're uh, coming in with this sand color. I was lucky enough, uh, there were some tire tracks on the beach here. So the tire tracks created some interest to the painting and sort of um, led the eye into the painting in a nice little, yeah, in a nice little way there, it leads the eye in. Now there's some grasses there, you can see them beyond the painting. And I'm just putting, there, oh, there I am again. That's it, it was getting a bit late in the day actually. Um, yeah, so I'm just putting those grasses on and I'm just putting them on with that fan brush, the same fan brush I used to um, paint the clouds with, and just dabbing that in with, um, it's, it's a bluey green, ultramarine blue, um, cadmium yellow pale, and a bit of titanium white there, but leaning quite blue. You can see, you can see yourself looking at them, you can see they're quite a bluey grass, bluey green, with the little goldy tops. And just letting the fan brush do all the work there. Letting the fan brush make those that grass shape. A little bit of driftwood there. And not over complicating, just an indication of driftwood for this little painting. Uh, putting that on with the synthetic flat brushes. Just moving that wet paint around until it looks something like driftwood, if you use your imagination. And now, back to this tricky water. The water is the trickiest part of a painting like this. Painted wet on wet. 
and I promise I'm doing a nice big, a bigger studio wave painting and I will video it. And I'll video how I paint painting uh, waves and the other method, like I said, which is an indirect method, layer upon layer. Paint it once, let it dry, come back, paint it again. So it was a really, it was a quite a glassy, calm sea on this particular day. So we do some sky reflections. So some lighter colour there on the water. That's uh, representing the sky reflecting. And then coming back with a little bit of white water. And that's about, that's about all you can do, or well, that's all I've found you can do to paint the water when you're standing there on the beach. So it's a simple little painting guys, it's a simple little process. Mix your sky colour, add some cadmium orange to your sky colour and you'll get something, you'll start to head something that looks like the sand colour that you need. And then the water is another variation of the sky, just add some more, in this case, um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber to make it more grey. Then you can just go ahead and paint a little seascape depending on where you are. Quite easily. Just like that. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember to like and subscribe if you like the video. Um, like I say, I'll come back next week and I'll week, maybe the week after with a bigger studio seascape. Cheers guys. Have a nice day. Happy painting.